Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Remake Hot Take podcast, the podcast where we play studio executives pitching remake ideas of our favorite and new media. My name is Maria Schwarz. And my name is Brooke Reese. And this week we are doing A Quiet Place Day One. Yay! Yay! Um, <laughs> usually you say more. <laughs> well, we're we're being quiet. I think oh, we're wow. we're actually going to do a, an entire podcast, um, through just primarily like visual expressions and sign language. So not very like conducive to the podcast medium, but it is in line with with the theme of this movie, hmm. um, which is to shut the fuck up. So <laughs> <laughs> that's what we're going to be doing. Um, we are doing A Quiet Place Day One, um, which I have talked about before, but I really love the Quiet Place series um, started out with, when was the first one released? Gosh, probably like five years ago now. So they have two more, like they have a second one too? This is mm-hmm. their third movie, yeah? Yep. Yeah, and Quiet Place was um, John Krasinski, Emily Blunt, keeping it in the family, and it's uh right up my alley because I really love um it's like kind of horror but more so like creature feature alien movie and um those are definitely like some of my my favorite apocalypse kind of movies um first one was 2018 and then there was a sequel with Killian Murphy um and the first two were directed by John Krasinski definitely like his his project his like brainchild I think a lot of people was like a a test for him to kind of move into this space because he was definitely well known for portraying you know Jim Halpert on The Office and in that like comedy like and silly then he got space. Hot. Then he got jacked for mm-hmm. what it was um that military something yeah right? Jake, something Ryan something Jack right? Ryan Jack got Ryan jacked, jacked for Jack I think I um, believe you. Yeah, he got hot and then like it was the meme with him like shirtless for that film and everyone was like, Jim, what happened to you? <laughs> um, so yeah, it, he kind of like then went into action films and I think this was his like directorial debut. Um, so he was in the first involved in the first and second films and um, the second film was a sequel, a sequel and prequel kind of combination. It did do... Um, mm-hmm some flashbacks to the the day one of that apocalypse situation with that particular family. Um, and now this third one, it was directed by someone else. I don't think John Krasinski had much, if anything to do with the production. Um, I think it was like kind of a story that he and the new director had kind of like loosely talked about. And then this new director kind of took it and ran with it. So this is um, definitely in a new direction, which we'll talk about as well. Yeah, um, I've I've never seen the first two movies, so you can do, you can do that that insider insider look. Um, but you did raise something that I actually wanted to talk about. Um, because this is like my first horror movie. Like I've seen kind of like gory movies before, but this is like the first horror movie that I have like sought out, and especially my first horror movie in a theater. And so a question that I had is is this a horror movie? Like, do I get, do I earn my stripes? Um, is this my horror, is this a horror movie? Um, Cause I'm seeing more online that like, it's not a super scary horror movie. It's more of kind of like a disaster movie. Mm-hmm. Um, but I wanted to kind of get your take on that. Yeah. Um, I would say I would classify it as very light horror, um, okay. but yeah, more so uh, you know, creature feature isn't really like its own category. It's kind of a subgenre of horror or of, you know, like action adventure. Is um, creature feature the same as monster movie or are they like spinoffs? I feel like they're the same. Creature okay. feature, Thank monster you. movie. Um, I don't know the terminology. I didn't, <laughs> I didn't major in film. <laughs> I mean, I, I don't remember that being on any of my quizzes, but um, I would say they're, they're basically the same. Anything where like the main threat or the main characters like our um you know alien creature monster anything like that so um yeah I but for this one in particular so quiet place in general I would categorize um less horror more creature apocalypse um it has horror elements and that it has you know like jump scares and these tense situations but 
I've seen like a lot of horror movies now. I think there are definitely like a lot of different genres of horror. So I don't think you'd be like wrong to call it a horror movie. Um, but this one in particular, this Quiet Place in particular, was very much on the low, low end of horror. Because honestly, its primary like category to me was almost like drama. Like it was very mm. like sad, um, very mm. character driven very emotional which was um a huge turn that we can see from from John Krasinski's directing to to the new director and this totally new storyline that they went in so I yeah, think so... you can earn your stripes but I think there's okay. a lot more in the horror horror genre that you could definitely explore yeah I was looking in the in the theater I was like what am I kind of getting myself into and I was looking at um slate sometimes does like a ranking system of horror and compares it to like other movies and non-horror movies um and they were kind of comparing the quiet place movies um so and i wanted to know kind of like what you thought of this ranking um so um on suspense so like the idea of like will will you dread the next jump scare Mm -hmm. um they said it is more suspenseful than quiet place and less suspenseful than the texas chainsaw massacre and about the same suspense level as jaws Mm. yeah i think jaws is a good comparison actually um have you seen jaws no (laughs) oh oh my god i mean i've seen parts of jaws um like it's like i've seen parts of like a bunch of horror movies like i've seen parts of the poltergeist but to the point where it's like i just think it's about like a family of five working a tv Mm -hmm. i've seen jaws which is just like a nice family movie about some like people on a boat you know (laughs) and so a family (laughs) jaws is like a wonderful beach vacation yeah exactly a a man's new job as sheriff (laughs) exactly um and then on gore level they said it was more gory than singing in the rain um and paranormal activity but less gory than a quiet place and about the same level as rear window which is rear window interesting it's a weird comparison um i'm fairly sure i've seen rear window isn't that like a a classic where um he like has a broken i maybe yeah and he's like watching watching things from a window yeah he he has like a broken leg the main character and he witnesses like a murder um from across the street but from my memory of that movie I don't remember ever I seeing I any any you gore know. at all I'm pretty sure he witnesses like a vague murder through the window and then like has to convince people that this murder happened and but more glory like... than singing in the rain somehow that got a higher score though than the first quiet place movie I don't know <laughs> I don't know I, don't know. I, w- I would not uh I wouldn't 100% confidence say that that is a very accurate ranking system um spookiness level like would it freak you out after the movie ended they put that it was more than beetlejuice less than the sixth sense and about tied with alien okay so see they're tying it with all of the like creature features Mm -hmm. so alien jaws i think those are all accurate um and then beetlejuice though beetlejuice creeped me out in like a different way not like a I'm gonna be up at night thinking about how I'm gonna be haunted but Beetlejuice is like man these people are fucking weird like oh they gave Just, me like okay a- FYI you've said it twice they gave me what oh the <laughs> Beetlejuice <laughs> they gave me like the weird ick but mm-hmm. I actually now like Beetlejuice it just took me like three times watching it and saying it um for for me to like it but gotcha. yeah and then overall scare factor, they actually said it was scarier than Quiet Place, um, which they made the same level as Hocus Pocus, <laughs> which feels wrong. Um, scarier than Beetlejuice, which is tied with Quiet Place 2, um, and more scary than Jurassic Park, but mm. less scary than Jaws, um, and about tied with The Sixth Sense. Interesting. Yeah, I would put them on the same level as... Jurassic Park is another good comparison. Mm-hmm. It's that, um, you know, suspense and a creature. But, like, I feel like the scariest movies are that I've seen are, like, The Conjuring 2 is really scary. Like, the Nun movies. 
um, yeah, ones that like you really like think about and like are worried to like go to bed at night. Yeah, but... I feel like I feel like ones that like can kind of get you anywhere. Um, like I feel like I don't know, quiet place. I mean, I guess it could get you anywhere theoretically. Um, but it's like so sudden that I would die, you know. Like <laughs> so, it's like it's not even really worth worrying about but I I was interested in the idea that they said that it was scarier than a quiet place in quiet place too did you feel like that was true no I felt like it went in a total opposite direction of the first two films and like the scare factor I think went like way down and they like bumped up the emotional dramatic factor a lot so no if okay. any if anything, I would say less. If I'm being generous, I would say they're about the same level of scariness. It's the same creatures and everything like that. So gotcha. I don't know. I guess there is like a little bit less suspense and stuff. Um, but yeah, definitely wouldn't say it's scary, like more scary, scarier. Gotcha. But yeah. Well, mm-hmm. what did you think of the overall film? Did you have, having not seen Quiet Place 1 and 2, did you have like questions about the creatures or stuff that didn't make sense with the world development um I don't think so because I was coming in on day one um (laughs) and so I kind of had the same knowledge as the characters um so I might have like had a more in-depth experience because I didn't really understand like what would happen next and I know Mm -hmm. that people die later on or whatever um and so I was like kind of I mean you know, I knew enough about a quiet place that I knew how it worked. So it mm-hmm. wasn't like, like, you know, the way that, that you survive made sense to me. Um, mm-hmm. And it's kind of self-explanatory. Um, there was something that I saw online about like, these are actually like alien monsters. Mm-hmm. Um, is that addressed in other movies? Or was I supposed to get that here? Or how does that work? <laughs> That they were aliens? How did you not get that? Where did you think they were coming from? <laughs> I don't know. The the streets. I don't know. <laughs> they were just there. I don't know. I don't think like alien. I think that maybe like, I don't know, like, you know, Stranger Things kind of vibes where it's like they <laughs> have always kind of walked among us or something or there's attack. I don't know. I don't. I don't know. Like, I don't think of all like creatures as be- being like aliens. Like, I feel mm-hmm. like there was something that they that I saw them like in a glimpse, like coming from the sky or Mm -hmm. something. Um, But I don't think they made a really big deal of it. Yeah. So the, the alien name are um, called death angels, which is never like addressed in the other movies. That's cute. Um, I think it's very doctor who (laughs) I've never seen doctor who, but, um, (laughs) but it just has that vibe. Um, but yeah, so there is a scene, um, it's it, towards the beginning of the movie when, um, the main character, Sam, she's like coming out of the puppet show and it does show them like coming down from the sky, like in, in ships mm-hmm. and in pods and stuff. Um, which like is implying that like extraterrestrial out of this world feature, um, and then they land and, uh, it's not really explained in the first movie, A Quiet Place, how they get here. We see everything that people like memify and make fun of is that, uh, John Krasinski's character has like a, a whiteboard, like in his basement with like newspaper clippings, trying to figure out like any information they had on the creatures. And he like writes like notes to himself that everyone like makes fun of because the notes are like what is the weakness like question mark question mark and like all this stuff but um yeah so we actually get like a little bit more creature backstory development in this film which is one of my critiques as well so I when I'm thinking of like day one and what I want this um kind of world to do um when they said that they were doing a day one I kind of wanted a little bit more of like background on the creatures and we definitely Mm -hmm. did not get that I feel like the focus was absolutely not on the creatures it felt more so like this director was like I want to tell like a really heartwarming tale of a woman who is at the end stage of her life which is what the big like um spoiler was like this was not mentioned in any of the press any of the trailers because like this is something that I like followed pretty religiously. Like I don't follow a lot of like pop culture upcoming, like film and media news, but I really like this series. So 
I saw like all the new trailers as they came out. And um, when I went, I hadn't seen any spoilers or anything. So when I went into the film and they were like, she's in hospice care, which they tell you in the first like 30 seconds. Of the film, I was like, holy shit. I was like, well, they kept that under wraps. And to me, it very much felt like they wanted to tell like a story about like closure and mm-hmm. um, choosing to live in circumstances, having meaning in life. How, like See, death. if I if I treated this like the other horror movies I've seen, this would have been a sweet movie about a hospice patient patient going to see a show, <laughs> and I would have stopped there. Yeah, going to see her favorite puppet show and getting a <laughs> slice of pizza. Yeah. Um. But yeah, so much more about like you know like death with dignity, like all this stuff, yeah. kind of like unfortunately in the background of an apocalypse yeah so um the the creature building that they did I don't know there's something I I think I read like a um review on Letterboxd that I just so agreed with and they were saying that they also love um day one apocalypse movies and there's just something about like the chaos and like the the struggle for survival in these crazy situations that like the, the day one really does better than some of these other movies where they come into the apocalypse a little bit later. So I'm thinking of like, I am legend. Like he's like well-established in his routines with the zombies. Like mm. we get those flashbacks, like we get flashbacks to the start of it. And those are always like the most exciting moments. Like yeah, um, I'm thinking World of War um, Z. Zombieland, which is not super scary, but like, you know, you can see when Zombieland starts and when, um, Jesse Eisenberg starts his little rule system. Mm-hmm. That's kind of that's kind of day one for me. Yeah, I I, I don't think that was a, a critique that I was seeing was that like you didn't really get people slowly kind of figuring out the rules of this mm-hmm. new apocalypse, like that you had to be quiet or anything. It's kind of like that random man in the theater figures it out and then silences our main character. Um, so she didn't really entirely figure out the rules of the society it was like just kind of given to her and most people are like it's mainly like days two through six like yeah. it's not really a day one um yeah, yeah she but... was kind of unconscious for i know exactly <laughs> like, I, I feel a little bit cheated she was kind of just like knocked out for most of it and i like i mean i would love to hear about that guy's like the the dad or whatever his story because it felt like you know there was also that moment where that guy is screaming on the roof and then he kills him Mm -hmm. and then we just like kind of move on we're just like okay we've traumatized a child (laughs) yeah let's keep moving for pizza um um but yeah no i i think like i wasn't entirely sure like what these monsters wanted or where they came from or like could they think like I don't need like this whole thing where like the monsters are talking to each other and like like hey Jerry just another Tuesday but like <laughs> I don't know I was like very curious about them and like their needs and kind of desires and that way I don't think like the antagonist I entirely understood but maybe that's kind of like a common creature thing is like they don't really have desires except for survival but then I was like why did they kind of like come here and like mm-hmm. are they just trying to take over I don't know and like why didn't they get swim lessons I don't know (laughs) no no those are all very fair critiques and that's Mm -hmm. those are the same critiques that I have and I think why I like day one apocalypse um you know some creature films they don't have like an agenda but part of the day one part of the like as you call it like the figuring out the rules um is trying to find their motivation you know it's like on like on a play screaming like what's your motivation to like Mm -hmm. the the characters and that's what I was wanting. And that's what I was hoping that we were going to get from day one. Because I think I I really like that. You know, I like true crime. I like mystery. I like detective. And I think part of um, those day one stuff is people acting like detectives and like working together to figure out, like you said, what the rules are, what are their um, intent in coming here. Like, obviously, they're not peaceable creatures like um and I think all of this stems truly from like my love of like signs as a little kid like I love M. Night Shyamalan signs and that's another one where there are aliens coming and there's like all of these like breakthrough moments where people are trying to figure out that it's like a scouting party that's here and Mm. what are the crop circles and um you know, the little kid like reads a book on aliens from some like alien authority conspiracy theorist. And he's like, 
well, the aliens are going to come here for like one of three reasons. And it's like, one reason is going to be that they have like used up all of the resources on their planet and they want to come and use the resources on ours. Um, another reason is that they're here like in the spirit of exploration and they just want to like make friends. And then the other reason is that they are here to like eat us to like use us as a resource or they're just planet destroyers so Mm. I really was missing that um that like detective work like even even in a lot of the ones that we see we see some sort of like uh government authority or scientists working on figuring this out and something that a quiet place has done differently it's had no sort of like authoritative board trying to figure out from like a scientific standpoint it's all been the first one was all you know farmers and average people trying to piece together um hence John Krasinski's like memeified whiteboard where he's Mm -hmm. trying to brainstorm ideas but um they did introduce like a, a couple more like background things which is that in the other films um we never see them like eat anything like they they kill people but they don't seem to eat them or anything which is mm. often like a motivation for the creatures they kill us and then eat us for like you know nourishment but um what we see is them just killing and destroying for for no just purpose laser tag. <laughs> just just going I mean, in there are, there are better killing alternatives i guess like hunting but i went with laser tech yeah um, uh well yeah, hunt- i think hunt- Something that I was reading because so, you know, I don't do horror movies, so I wasn't ever planning to watch this movie. So I knew all the spoilers going into it. And something that people were talking about is that there were a bunch of deleted scenes. Mm -hmm. um, And one of them was um, so this is from like people. I don't know. I don't know how much of it is to be believed, obviously, but um, some of it was like from people who saw early releases of it. Mm -hmm. And they were like, oh, um, originally when um is it sam or sammy i keep on seeing like i think her full name is like samira or something like that um but lupita nyong'o's character and eric go back to her apartment and apparently in an earlier release it was like them and like two older men just like talking about things um so maybe that was where we kind of got some of the like thinking about like why are they here kind of things Mm -hmm. um another thing that apparently um and I don't, I don't know again if this is true, but uh, one of the things was like Eric was actually like suicidal, and he had actually gone to like the subway to like kill himself. And then there's that part in the actual like release of the movie where he's like, "This was not part of the plan," mm-hmm. um, which I think that would change the vibe of that kind of conversation a little bit. Um, so I don't know if that's true, but mm-hmm. um, people were like, that would also change of like someone she gave up her life for someone who learned to like keep living when he didn't want to so that also kind of changes the thing so I don't know I don't know if those are true but um I thought that was interesting on like kind of what they decided mm-hmm. to cut out yeah um real quick back to what I was saying so they introduce um them eating from these like egg pod things oh. which is the first time that we've seen it it's the scene where they're in like, like the, the construction. Matrix? No, they're in like the construction site. It's when Eric rescues um the kitty Frodo. Oh, and that, they... I couldn't figure out what the heck that was. Mm-hmm. So there, there's some sort of like egg pods, and they were eating from them. So I For feel some like reason we're... I thought that was a skull, and I was like, "What is kitty eating?" <laughs> no, it's some sort of like alien pod. So we get okay. like some sense that they're like planting these pods, and then maybe feeding off them, maybe breeding. Um, so it did do a little bit more, but there was like absolutely like no talk about it. Again, it very much was like, this is a background situation to the more important thing of getting Sam's like uh, emotional support cat Frodo. Um, but yeah, so about the deleted scenes, I actually noticed that because like I said, this is one of the like rare times where I like really keep up with like trailer releases and stuff. Mm-hmm. And I remember like there was um, a scene with Joseph Quinn in like a trailer where he's like in a phone booth and Mm. the phone booth is like where he gets like trapped in and then there to my not no there were no phone booth scenes like I couldn't remember him in the phone booth at all in the movie and then again in the trailers um they did two that was the British cut (laughs) 
that, yeah, that was the UK <laughs> cut. It was it was the red phone. Booth. <laughs> um, but so two other things that you mentioned. Um, there was one scene in the trailer where this the guy actually featured prominently in the trailer. Mm-hmm. It was like he was doing vo- voiceover, and then they cut to him in her apartment, and it was an older man. Um, And he was saying something, I don't know, like profound as they, there were like montage scenes of the violence. Um, And you could tell that it was a scene where there's like the thunderstorm and they're finally in her apartment. So they totally cut those guys out, um, left them in the trailer though. That would suck as an actor. You really thought you made it. (laughs) You thought you made it and you featured prominently in in one of the trailers. And I guess there's like some kind of proof that you were in it. (laughs) Yeah. Um, and then they were cut somehow. And then in another one of the trailers, I thought this was interesting too. I don't know if this is something, this must be something that's like regularly done in Hollywood. I've just never noticed it before because I don't pay attention to the trailers that often. Or by the time I'm seeing a trailer, I've already seen the movie and I'm not like noticing any differences. Um, but another difference was that they had um, the trailer and they they spoiled the scene where... Um, Alex Wolf, the who plays the hospice nurse Ruben, mm-hmm. um, he goes out to stop the generator um, from making noise, and his shirt rips, and he's attacked by one of the creatures. And they show that in the trailer, but they replaced Alex Wolf with an old man, um, which <laughs> yeah. I thought was really interesting. So it's just like this old white guy in the in the trailer. It's the exact same scene. I think he's even wearing like a similar outfit, but it's it's Alex Wolf's scene. So I, I wonder if That's they did that weird. to. I guess they did that to prevent spoilers, but... Or they're um, like, actually, we're a huge Naked Brothers band fan. Yeah. <laughs> like, they got him in last minute, and he, yeah. he, he was able to do know. a couple scenes. So. I mean, he did a lot of, like, the press. Like, he was at, like, the premieres and stuff. I mean, obviously not as much press as Lupita and Joe did, but he did occasionally attend, which was why I kind of expected, because I didn't really watch any trailers, but I, like, knew what happened. But I expected like him to kind of last longer because he was like mm-hmm. starring in it. Um, but he was gone pretty quickly. I think that was also something that I saw some criticism about is like it wasn't exactly a formula on like who got chosen. Like the the monsters didn't go after like this generator thing, but they went after like a shirt rip or something. And like but like the 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 kids were fine under the fountain. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, is it just like background noise that they Mm -hmm. kind of ignore so like if you just carried around like a white noise machine like are you good (laughs) or would that draw people yeah so it's definitely explained more in the first quiet place um but basically like picture like if you have all of this other noise in the background so they're the creatures are completely blind and they rely entirely on their very acute sense of hearing and and there's no movie where they have LASIK. <laughs> no that's, LASIK. That's I, third. Okay. I don't even think they have like eyes. Like it, they they're fully covered in this like armor like material, and I don't see that they even have anything that has eyes. So um, they can still try. <laughs> even LASIK, but apparently LASIK very scary. I don't know if it's just fear mongering online, but a lot of people have um very bad results for LASIK yeah like and, chronic pain now because yeah of LASIK. chronic pain and like suicide like suicide rates increase wow. like after LASIK if you have um intense pain because it's like apparently so so like so bad it's like level 10 constantly um but yeah so no LASIK no corrective lenses for these mm. um for these guys but in the first movie um you know imagine they have super like acute sense of hearing so they can hear like a pin drop, but mm. imagine trying to hear a pin drop if like a semi truck is rolling past. You're mm. not going to be able to distinguish the pin drop within the semi truck. So if you have a ton of other distracting noise, which is why it, it you know, they didn't know this yet. They're in literally day one, hour like 15. And so unfortunately, like Alex Wolf's character goes to turn off the generator because they see it as a threat and it would draw more creatures to them um but unfortunately he went to turn it off and now that there was like the absence of that noise they could very much hear the the rip of his shirt Mm. so the the water is actually used um in the first film there is um basically like a, a waterfall near their house they're out in the country and farm farmland 
and there's like a waterfall near there. And if you go under the waterfall, you can like talk freely. Um, one for the fact that they like can't swim, they're not going to go near the bodies of water to begin with. And two, because of the fact that the, the water, um, the noise of the, the, the water like drowns out any other sound that you make. So yeah, it's, Mm -hmm. it's not super explained in this film. I think you can like pick up on like a little bit of clues with like the fountain scene and everything, but it's like, fully explicitly explained in the first quiet place does anyone ever try to fight the creatures because that's the thing is like i didn't see anyone i didn't see like any kind of like test of strength versus like um like stranger things where it's like you know they you know steve is just out there with his little bat um but like it seems like people just like get dragged and then are just gone Mm -hmm. um which is then now it's interesting now that you say that they don't like eat so i'm like what's the kind of like fight is it just like you get caught you die like is there any kind of struggle with it no they they have like razor sharp claws um oh, okay that's not and good. and teeth so basically like every single person that you see get dragged like isn't really getting dragged they're kind of getting like impaled and immediately killed <laughs> oh that's not good okay. yeah so there's not really any fighting back um in the first quiet place they do devise like a way to kill the creatures Hmm. and um essentially they figure it out because the the main character's daughter is um deaf and she has a cochlear implant and her dad's i think her cochlear implant was destroyed or broken somehow and her dad is trying to like create one and fix it for her um And the sound of the cochlear implant when she puts it up as he's trying to fix it makes like a very high pitch, like high frequency noise. And she finds out the same noise like bothers the creatures as well. Mm -hmm. And so like the kind of climax of the film is that she realizes that it can be used to basically like kind of disable the creatures because they're like in pain from hearing this really high frequency pitch. And when they're in pain, um, they basically, like, their defenses are lowered and then they're mm. able to like take a shotgun and like blow their heads off. So oh, interesting. Um, as okay. long as they're like not super high alert and not like using their armor to, to protect themselves, they can kind of kill them. So there are ways that people have found to kill them, but I guess you have to wait until day like 472 or whatever <laughs> the first oh, quiet place takes, takes place during. Yeah, so I think those are all my questions about the movie. I have comments and I have experiences. Okay, let's get into them. Um, So first off, like I mentioned, this was my first horror movie in a theater. Um, And I think it was like a good horror movie to start out with. And like, it's not super, super horror, but it's also like that kind of thing where it's like, I've never seen a horror movie in a theater with surround sound where it's like, I didn't know how I was going to react to it. Mm -hmm. And I feel like this is not the movie to necessarily test how you react to it because it's supposed to be completely quiet. Mm -hmm. And there was like one other man and he was sitting right in front of me um, out of every out of every seat. He chose the one right there. Um, And um, and I was afraid that I was making sound because he kept like looking back at me. But I don't think I think I was silent. Um, But so it wasn't like really. So I was so nervous that I was going to make sound because I didn't know if I was going to react that I ended up like giving myself an anxiety attack and a stomach ache because I was like, you can't make any sound. You can't leave and go to the bathroom. You're in this for an hour and 40 minutes. Um, And lucky for me or unlucky for me, um, depending how you feel about it, um, my AMC was like, I don't know if they were short staffed. I don't know what was happening. Um, But basically I got there and they didn't have any signs on like what was playing in what theater. So I was like, I don't even know if I'm in the right place. And then they didn't close any of the theater doors. And so during like the really quiet moments, I was getting twisters. <laughs> and I was hearing. Uh, so I basically saw two movies for the price of one, mm-hmm. um, which is cool. But so it was like I didn't actually get like the full like suspense factor because mm-hmm. I was hearing like Glenn Powell, Glenn Powling um, the whole time. And so I, you know, in that, in that way, I think it was like a good, because I think the like scare factor would have scared me if it was like too quiet. Um, but I don't think that was what was supposed to happen. And it was like literally like 20 minutes before it ended, I heard a guy 
come in. He goes, oh shit. And then he closed the doors <laughs> um, and then we were locked in. Um, so I don't think I necessarily got like the experience that I was supposed to get, um, but I was fine with that. Um, but yeah, I um, I was, I'm definitely, I don't know. I'm, I'm also like very much not like a jump scare person. And so like I know I've mentioned before when we talked about Hunger Games, um, like I've never seen that mutt scene where the mutts do the little jump scare mm -hmm. in the arena, um, because like the music gets really quiet and you know, it's going to happen. So I just look away every single time. And that was kind of like my, <laughs> my like gut instinct, my survival instinct the entire time was to like, look in the corner of the screen. So I saw all the jump scares out of the corner of my eye. Um, but I kind of didn't look at them full on. Mm -hmm. Um, the only one that did get me was that one where she's like I think it's a dream where she's like in the apartment and like the city of New York is like all completely normal and then like a monster jumps out mm. I got that one because I was so into how dirty her mirror or her window was <laughs> that I was like looking at it so intensely and that one did get me um because that was the only one I wasn't expecting um but yeah what was your experience of like seeing it as as a horror movie aficionado hmm. as a creature feature horror movie disaster aficionado I don't know if there are any other terms that you mentioned <laughs> I, I think that covers it okay um wait but I'm confused I feel like you we did a whole pod on Hill House and Hill House has a lot of jump scares too yeah but it's not like I've never seen a horror movie in theaters where it's like you know Hill House I could minimize or like the screen and like play sudoku on the, on the right hand side and so it becomes less scary when it's in a sudoku setting mm. um and here i couldn't have a sudoku setting um so yeah because nicole kidman would not want me to have my phone out in her church um mm. so um yeah so i think it's it's like it's harder to ignore those jump scares and like i mentioned with hill house it's like they did say that there were like ghosts in the background, mm -hmm. but I was playing Sudoku, so <laughs> I didn't see them. You're like I, I didn't even really watch the series. <laughs> I, I, I was just... focusing on numbers one through nine. Yeah, I kind of played Sudoku, and maybe some stuff happened. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, my experience. It's funny. I went to. I don't have any AMC's around me. Um, that are like of good quality. So uh, my friend and I usually go Apparently to me either. <laughs> Yeah, they didn't know. They didn't do the door procedure. Mm -hmm. Um, but my friend and I usually go to something called like um Silver Spot Cinema, which there aren't a ton of them, but mm -hmm. it's comparable to like Movie Tavern, which was in mm -hmm. um Virginia. And it's one of those where it's like a restaurant and bar service um during the film. Why would so... you do that during this movie? <laughs> well, because I really like the food there. They have great crispy shrimp. Um and like, a, so I had like a full dinner, like everyone eats food. So I just couldn't, I mean, I did, I bought chips and I bought gummies and I could only eat the gummies. Um, or it was like, I was doing the, the technique that they were using where it's like you crunch during the thunder, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but how, how did you eat? I just ate like normal because oh I'm not paranoid <laughs> about <laughs> other people hating me and everyone else is eating. Um, there was a moment though where like I bring like my own Tupperware as well because mm. <laughs> there's no like to go boxes or anything. So I have my own Tupperware in the purse. And then um the Tupperware was a, a touch loud. I was mm. um becoming a bit of a nuisance as I tried to like close the Tupperware lid. Um, but honestly, there were enough loud parts that I can kind of, like you said, just time it. Um mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah I, I think it would be different if it was like a theater full of people where it's like the sound could be coming from anywhere. You um, remain anonymous. <laughs> but it's like any sound that wasn't me, it was him. If it yeah. was any sound that wasn't him, it was me. Unless it was the employee that realized that the doors were open. Unless it was Glenn Powell. <laughs> yeah, it was it was either you, me, or Glenn. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, so that's that was my viewing experience. But um let's jump into like some other themes or like favorite or least favorite moments and then um being mindful of time then we can move into the the remakes yeah. okay um I was pissed that um Eric never took off his tie 
Like, I feel like that would get so, like, why was it so tight the entire time, the entire movie? Yeah, he was buttoned up. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but let's talk about uh, this character, because do you want to briefly explain your love of of Joseph Quinn? Sure. Um. So briefly, I love him. Um. <laughs> Um, I think he's great. I think, um, I feel like Joseph Quinn in every role, and I've only seen, um, like Stranger Things, a bit of makeup, and this. Um, I don't think I've seen necessarily anything. I mean, I've seen, I've seen Game of Thrones, but I didn't really know that it was him at the time. Oh, I did see, um, him in the, um, I don't remember what it's called now, but the the J.K. Rowling murder mystery crime spinoff thing, whatever mm. that show is, when where the one that she wrote under the other pen name that became a TV show, and he was in one of those episodes, and he was really good. But I think the thing that he always gives off is like, you know, that older kid that comes into your your acting class, um, who is like maybe like the TA, and. He, he is playing the games that everyone else is playing and like this like improv games um and everyone else is feeling really like self-conscious and silly about it and then he comes in and he's like very confident and all in um I think that's what Joe Quinn kind of gives to every part like I've definitely seen movies where I'm like oh that actor is trying to act um but it feels like Joe Quinn like really is into the character and fully mm-hmm. into the scene in a way that like gets me excited. Um, also, his face is great. His voice is great. <laughs> so we love him. He sounds like a really nice person. Like um, I've been following the um, press tour and um, Lupita did say something about like that her memory was really bad during the entire movie. And that was really embarrassing because like the director was like giving her notes for them to do. And then she would like immediately forget them. And she was like, so then um, Joe would just like kind of like quietly mutter them under his breath as if it was like for himself. Mm -hmm. But she was like, I knew that it was for me, that he was trying to help me not feel embarrassed that I couldn't remember. So really great guy Um, during that little subway scene where they're in the water. uh, Apparently he did save a cat. So we love (laughs) um but yeah 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 I thought he did really good I um you like really liked his let's call it like his breakout performance as Eddie in Stranger Things um I don't know if I like quite fell in love with Eddie as a character as much as other people did um but I really liked Joseph Quinn's performance in this and they let him be British this is his best hair yeah he doesn't um, wear it like this anymore and I don't know why I think someone said that like his forehead was a pr- problem and it's not it's not yeah. at all um it's not yeah. because now he's doing the little like kind of mini bang thing hmm. well now right now his hair is buzzed but he was doing the like mini bang kind of thing and I just didn't think that he had enough hair for that um so I think you know follow the mean girls rule his hair looks se- sexy pushed back so <laughs> But yeah, please continue. I liked, <laughs> I liked his hair. Um, but I thought this was a really strong performance. Um, mm-hmm. I think that Lupita is also like a very good emotional, dramatic actor as well. Yeah. Um, and I thought they were like a really good pairing too. Like, mm-hmm. um, it w- it was interesting, you know, like having this premise of like two complete strangers and and how much like Joseph Quinn's character seems to like care for um for Sam and Frodo, like right off the bat. And kind of using Frodo as this emotional support cat because Joseph Quinn's character, his biggest like thing that he has to overcome is like he clearly has like pretty bad anxiety and is having like panic attacks and stuff (laughs) throughout (laughs) the film. And the fact that it's like an emotional support cat, like Frodo that comes and saves them and they have I know, so freaking convenient. (laughs) I know. Um, but yeah, I thought he did like really good and and like you said, Mm -hmm. like he um like convinced me of his like earnest like mm. desire to to help her and um and it just really lended itself to these like beautiful moments that um he's he's doing like walking the fine line of it being like really cheesy um like in the club like doing a performance but I feel like he like totally pulls it off um and mm. I, I'm not sure that other actors could have done done as well so I I really commend both of them for their performances and 
like taking a look at the like emotional turn to this I thought it was just a really good story like they have such like a brief amount of time together and I think it is like just really a testament to like the strength of the human spirit that Lupita is in like such like physical pain right like we Mm -hmm. see like how hard it is for her to do like minimal daily activities when she's at the hospice care and like um Ruben played by Alex Wolf is also a great character like very kind people and I think that most hospice nurses are very kind <laughs> like I don't think you I get into like, th- fuck you <laughs> yeah I don't think they get into that that field if you're like a notorious bitch like I think most <laughs> hospice people are like angels so you know he convinces her to go on this trip and we see how much like he cares for her and um Lupita even though she's in Sam even though she's in like incredible pain um how much she's willing to like survive and, and fight off these um these monsters and um you know she's able to like go out on her own terms though like you know we yeah. see her um drawing drawing the monsters away so that Eric and Frodo can try to jump on the boat and like um escape and have a better life um and then at the end she's like I think she's listening to like an iPod or something um yeah. and she's she's listening to her own music and she's able to to kind of like have her like last breath and and feel a little bit more a part of herself she was kind of able to to reclaim like a sense of self that it seemed that she did not have um being in hospice she's um like a, a cancer victim and um this movie made me cry like so many yeah. times I was I, I was why sobbing I didn't know that like horror movies could do that um like I didn't know I didn't know that they were more than like gore and scare I don't know so I don't know if that's like common for horror movies or if this is like I don't know new like does does, are there crying moments in other horror movies yeah oh for sure there's I mean there's a ton of variety within horror right like there are like romance movies where you don't sob um and I think like it, it's just like any other genre there there are comedy things and romance movies and horror movies that can be like pretty formulaic like um for a lot of these horror movies I kind of know like a lot of what to expect but there are definitely like tearjerker scenes um I think that horror like relies on our our sense of of loss right like mm-hmm. it's it's preying off of um basic human things like fear and sadness and and the desire to you know not lose a loved one or lose your life so um I think that there are definitely like other horror movies where I've cried um this one was pretty heavy-handed in in its uh in its emotional um drama sad scenes but yeah I I really loved the the scene that like is probably the like easiest one to point to in this film where she finally like gets her pizza and it's it was an interesting choice for her not to get the pizza that she really wanted she wanted this specific Mm -hmm. pizza um but it was kind of like a joke as well you know like New York City there's like a pizza place on every single corner um and so they're able to get a different pizza but she is able to to sit in the place and kind of like reconnect with her um with her family reconnect with her dad who was this what, was he a singer or a pianist or something at a jazz yeah, I think club? Jazz pianist, yeah. Yeah, and she was able to to reconnect with herself because we see her be this pretty like bitter person, and and obviously like she's very young, she's very angry that she is dying and that she is losing her sense of self. She's not in her apartment; she's in an unfamiliar place. So, mm-hmm. yeah, really, really happy to see that she has regained those parts of herself. Yeah, and I think we we have to talk a little bit about the cat yeah um um I haven't spent a lot of time with cats I haven't spent a lot of time with dogs I'm not super an animal person I never grew up with animals um but I did definitely want the cat to live um I did think however like you know we're getting to a new place every single time and we just kind of throw the cat to the ground and Mm -hmm. I think we really need to like keep hold of the leash um because the cat just kept on doing a cat thing and just wandering and I felt like that kept on getting us into problems and I was like where is the cat in every moment um so I think uh Eric tighter leash control maybe (laughs) going forward um but yeah no I like the cat and I felt like the cat kind of like chose Eric um Mm -hmm. 
And I don't know. I thought Cat was a really good actor. I feel like the cat's kind of like that older, that older kid that comes into the theater class and is like really into. It. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, I really liked. I thought the cat was really cute. Um, not really making any sound. I feel like the cat also would survive. Um, except for that one part where he was like on a ledge or whatever. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, what did you think of the cat? Yeah, I love him. Um, I think Joseph Quinn said that in one of the press interviews that Frodo was like the star of the show. And I definitely agree with that. Um, I like just put together when I was trying to like write down a couple of ideas for this podcast that like her, the main character's name is Sam and she named her cat Frodo. So that they're Sam and Frodo, which is so cute. Um, just the best little pairing there, obviously reference to Lord of the Rings and, um, yeah, I very good point. I was getting very distressed every time <laughs> they would have the cat because they went to such great lengths to get the kitty back. And they were like, oh, thank God, we finally have you now. And then they were like, then we're just eat. Do, whatever, <laughs> do whatever the fuck you want. And I'm like, why? I'm like, either we let the cat go and we make our peace with never seeing them again, or we we want to have them be with us and we take active steps to ensure that the cat doesn't get out again. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, I thought that was, that was very irksome to me and it was a, a source of anxiety. So yeah, now that Eric is in charge, um, I hope he is investing in like a cat carrier perhaps. Yeah, right? like, like, the, like the Argyle, yeah, the Argyle like cat carrier. The backpack. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, while you're like fishing around for your survival, uh, out there in the ocean, see if there's like a cat backpack on board, um, see what we can do. But yeah, it was very funny. I feel like for all of these, I, I very much am an animal person. Um, I've had like, I've owned a couple of cats in my life, but my, my most recent pets are, um, rabbits. So the good thing about rabbits is they like physically can't vocalize. So <laughs> they wouldn't make any noise that way. How do but they, they give consent? Uh, visual cues uh, <laughs> but um they can thump like thumper is named after um thumper from bambi because they do thump so they like slap their feet on the ground oh fuck and i think the thing is that like in burrows um when they're like underground they would um it's like a warning signal because it can kind of like reverberate throughout the whole like uh like burrow um or is it called a burrow i think it might be called something else um but anyways um, so they would thump. So I was thinking about my own pet rabbits, bagel and parsley. And I don't even think it would be like a question of like, would they survive? Because um, rabbits can like, like startle and literally kill themselves from being scared to death. Um, so like, if you have like a bunny. That was what I was afraid of in the theater. I was like, what <laughs> if that's my mechanism? <laughs> no, it, you, that cannot happen to you. Um, uh but it can happen to rabbits so like if you have like a dog and like the dog barks at them or gets in their face they literally can just pass away from uh -oh. from like cardiac arrest so I don't think I'd even have to worry about like getting my bunnies um because they would they would just they would just die on on impact like they <laughs> they're not making it out of this scenario so no need to worry but okay unless you have any final thoughts we should probably jump into to remake Sure. okay so I can start out my my like honest feedback uh remake is that I, I do want more exposition on the monsters mm -hmm. like um like I said I think if we could get some sort of like if they if they do continue on with the quiet place um series and the quiet place like world I feel like we need to now get like I said like scientists or some sort of like authoritative body like the the u.s government scientists like the army something i want someone nancy drew like sherlock holmes i want some sort of like detective some sort of person that's going to be questioning <laughs> and and writing on those aforementioned uh whiteboards i just want to see more of it and if i were to give like honest feedback for the next film i just want more exposition on the monsters um, what their motivations are, like how how they work, where they came from, like are there other planets out there? Like, um, we kind of came up with kind of like a like a janky cure to kill them. Like we can't all go around with cochlear implants, um, or like using the sound in other ways. So I kind of just want to come up with like more sophisticated ways of finding their weakness, like just more like scientific. 
background exposition because that's some of my favorite stuff. Um, and then I didn't like come up with great stuff with this, mostly because I saw this movie like a month ago and then was trying to haven't seen it since. <laughs> but, um, you know, one could say that this film, um, is it like, advocating for disabilities the monsters are blind the first two films Mm. um center around uh, a main character and the actress herself is deaf so I'm like are we like in the disability community so I would like to see but they were really against wheelchairs in this movie I would like to see more disability representation so I'm Mm. like okay are we gonna get like a monster that is like deaf blind, like mm-hmm. like a Helen Keller uses their little spiky armors to feel vibrations using like the hand sign language system. Um, you know, like we're doing, we're only going so far in terms of disability representation. So I I feel like we could go further. And I would obviously want them, um, I would want the aliens to consult with someone um that has experienced those lived uh you know lived experiences so I just feel like we could go further and I want to see like you said a death angel in a wheelchair um a death angel with limb differences like we we can do more than we are currently doing blind is not going to cover it anymore that's old news at this point (laughs) um so that's you know one option um and then since they are called the death angels um when you hear that term, I feel like the first thought is like punk rock alternative band. Mm -hmm. Um, And rightfully so, because I feel like we should see the monsters, um, you know, like what's their culture? Like, I I feel like we should have the the death angels come in and like, yeah, they, they slash and they rip and they tear each other up. Um, But they also like can really hit like the piano keys really hard. And And that's why they want everyone to just be quiet and yeah they're like the show has started ladies and gentlemen cell phones off no like no talking anything um so you know they they can shred up people they can shred the guitar strings like i think that calling them death angels the logical conclusion is that they are all trying to be in a punk rock alternative band Hmm. um and they had to they're on the world tour they're on the universal tour (laughs) what they're actually doing is they're searching for simon cowell (laughs) <laughs> they want to be on the voice they're like <laughs> they're... we saw what you did with one direction <laughs> um and we have like, a little something new <laughs> like we have a similar concept and <laughs> uh we just want all eyes and ears on us um mm-hmm. so yeah that's that's also another thing and then um this being new york city i'm a little bit confused on what the timeline is it seems like a little bit earlier new york city um with like the ipod i feel like we're more yeah. in like gosh like what's that era like 2010 um and mm-hmm. another thing that was very popular in 2010 was um flash mobs so i think that this is just perfect missed opportunity for when you know they kind of make the announcement on the speaker that you need to go to the port and we'll take you off from there and everyone kind of comes out of their hiding places and they're shuffling along um perfect opportunity and you know that if we are in 2010 new york city at least half of those people in there had already at some point been in a planned flash mob so they they could have been like is this the cue like is is this all kind of just leading up to one big flash mob and as they're walking they do like i don't know the beyonce like single ladies dance or something like i i feel like we could have had like a moment of comedic relief there i think that was something missing that was like we are in new york but i think i would have liked to see times square mm-hmm. like i would have liked to see elmo trampled you know <laughs> yeah yeah yeah. i, I want to see the uh um what is it do they still have the big like toys r us there anymore mm, maybe like, i don't remember if they got rid of it i don't know i like think they Hershey got rid of World. it actually the m M&M store yeah the m M&M store like the monsters go in and like pick out their own little goodie bag and then they're <laughs> like they're like the humans aren't so bad actually <laughs> should we still kill them um uh, but yeah so like more new york features i can definitely mm-hmm. see that like really leaning into like the the hot dog stand the the tourist guy like one of those um like double decker buses yeah <laughs> stuff like that so yeah those are all in mind what about your remakes um I didn't have too much. I was thinking about like, how do we make this more entry level, right? 
um, <laughs> for for newbies to the horror movie franchise. Um, because I think you know it's scary seeing a horror movie for the first time in a theater where you're not allowed to make noise and you don't know how you're going to react. So mm-hmm. one way I was thinking is like we have the whole entire everything everything is exactly the same but it's that old man acting it out on his marionette i think that would be (laughs) approachable (laughs) as an entry-level horror film um or um during all of the silent parts um they just play that the the irish kid rapper this the spark thing so you know in a right before the the, the monsters attack they're like dun, 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 dun. you know what that song is uh-uh the little irish kid rappers oh you think i can do thing. i doubt it yeah 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 um so just in all of the quiet moments if we just played that i think that would um help a little bit um to raise the lower the tension um and then i was thinking um instead of like a quiet place i feel like that's like a quiet place day one is a long title um so we can just take out a quiet place and just like name any quiet place so like library mm-hmm. day one um which i think like i mean i feel like a library would be like pretty good like i mean everywhere else might be destroyed but like a campus library third floor business as usual <laughs> wait that's actually such a good idea like they they should have done that honestly mm-hmm. i hope that's in the next movie i, think I want it's like um like you know in a uh, amazing spider-man 2 where the there's like a spider attack or maybe it's the first one i don't know the one with the lizard and then there's stan lee with like headphones on in the library just like completely oblivious that there's a mm-hmm. fight behind him I don't know. I think that that's so fun. funny. Yeah, we should. They should do that where it's like, um, you know, putting them all in places where they have no no idea that something's going on. So it's like the library, and then like a silent disco. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like the <laughs> NYU library is entirely fine. <laughs> but but can you also imagine like they could build up the suspense like really easy, like everyone's completely silent, and then they like slowly start to like go to the windows and like Mm. look down at the chaos oh man that's such a missed (laughs) opportunity they should have done that i was also thinking a quiet place day negative one where we see like the night before um and maybe everyone's partying and then Mm. they're hung over on day one so any sound sets them off too so Mm. they will be really quiet um and then i just had a few quick ones so like a quiet place day pun um, where they go after any dads making dad jokes. Um, um, a Quiet Place Day Nun, because um, I feel like nuns are kind of a common horror trope, mm-hmm. so we could play with that a little bit. Um, a Quiet Place Day Run, so any of those afternoon joggers, um, they're coming for you, um, <laughs> so that everyone who is stationary feels a little bit better. Um, so maybe that's an option. Um, but those are all of my things. Um, Nepo wise, Joseph Quinn actually is like a Nepo baby, but I don't think he's like a major, like, I don't think it's like major scales. I, I don't like, you know, like his family doesn't have like Wikipedia pages, you know, Mm -hmm. but he was raised like in the business. So, you know, whatever. Um, but, um, his mom, worked in television production. His stepfather was a cinematographer, a DOP, and his dad was a director. Um, So that's what he has going on. Um, Alex Wolf's family is like all incredibly rich, um, which explains why he had fame so young with like the Naked Brothers Band. His mom is Polly Draper, who wrote the Naked Brothers Band content. She's an actress a director, a producer. She has like a WGA award. Um, She was in the ABC show 30 something and his dad is a famous jazz pianist. Um, So we have that little, that little tie in. Um, And all of his family are like bankers and venture capitalists. So I thought you were going to say ventriloquist. (laughs) Yeah. They're Uh, actually the marionette as well. (laughs) I was like, wow, another tie in. Um, But Brooke, what have you been watching lately? I haven't been watching much. Um, finished one season of Walking Dead. I think it was end of season seven, now beginning of season eight. So I'm fully in the mix of like um, Rick's group and Negan's group, like going to to actual war with each other, which is good. I think Carl is about to die. I'm pretty sure he dies during the season. I haven't seen it, but I think it's coming soon. 
Um, and then really the only movie that I watched was um, Madam Web, which was, ooh, um, like it was just like normal bad for like the first like hour and a half. I didn't quite get the hype. I was like, oh, you know, uh, Dakota Johnson, her line delivery is always like, does she want to be here? <laughs> like, does she From have better? Press, it's no. Yeah. Like, she does she know. have better things to do? Yes. Apparently but... she didn't know it was a Marvel movie, which like, how do you not know? <laughs> I don't know. She seemed confused and there are like a bunch of uh, memeified lines in there and line delivery. There's like just a couple of interesting, <laughs> interesting choices. And then the last 30 minutes is where it really shines with it's mm. just like, camp campiness and its ability to be like a cult classic and how bad it is and how weird the lines are um and there's one point where she's like reconnecting with her mother and discovering her motivations because her mom was actually in the middle of the amazon to try to find a cure for this like rare like muscular disease or something and and Dakota Johnson's like, but I don't have muscular dystrophy or like something <laughs> like that. Like she just says the most random things. And then she like somehow is this like all powerful being. But then I guess at the end, she like becomes blind and also paralyzed, which isn't fully like explained. Um, Really, really bad. Like truly, 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 truly mm. bad. Those last like 20 to 30 minutes. So yeah, that was a stinker. Um. And then I uh, finished the third book in the Akatar series, which is oh, so good. I really want someone to pick this up and make this into a movie. Like I could totally oh, see sure it working they are. so well. I think there, there were already talks about Hulu having the rights, but then I think they gave them up. Um, mm. Personally, I don't really want it turned into a series. I'm not much of like a series person for, for book to like... Um, I feel like it's hard for, it's like fantasy, right? Mm -hmm. I feel like it's hard for fantasy. I don't, I mean, I guess there's like the magicians, but I didn't, that was like, I mean, it kind of became like a teen trashy kind of thing. I don't know if I've seen necessarily like a good. I think Vampire Diaries Mm, is a, that's a good example of Vampire Diaries, but um. But yeah, I, I'm more so in pro like movie with stuff like this. So mm. I'm hoping for a movie. Of course, I'll take a series adaptation, but I'm hoping for a movie. And I don't have enough people to talk to about this, but it's Sorry. so good. Um, My one coworker, she is um on maternity leave now, but she was like actively giving labor, like giving birth. It was in labor. <laughs> oh, I don't um, know why. I thought you were going to go a completely different direction with that. Continue. Um, she was like actively in labor and she was like messaging me because she needed like something done for her work the next day. And I like responded to her right away. It was at like one in the morning. And then she like yelled at me for being up that late. And she like really loves the series too. And I was like, well, I'm at the part where like all the high lords are meeting. And she was like, oh, never mind. I totally <laughs> under- understand why you're awake. So um yeah, I really like that. But what have you been watching, Maria? Um, I saw The Wizard of Oz for its like, I don't know, like 85th anniversary question mark, um, at the Library of Congress. Um, which was, you know, fun to see. Um I always forget like uh, the first half of the movie. I don't think, I don't know. I just don't I think it's, I don't know if it's because it's like black and white or we're like not in Oz and that's like kind of like what we think about, but it's like, I always forget like every plot thing that like this lady wants to put down Toto and they're like, that is her, her right. <laughs> oh no, I yeah. haven't watched it in so long, probably yeah. like 10 years at least. They're like the, I think it's like the neighbor or something. Toto has been like around her like farm or garden or whatever. And she's like, well, Toto didn't mean to. And then she's like, well, the lady said that she's going to put Toto down and she has that right. So <laughs> put him in this little basket and oh, let's no. take Toto off to kill him. Um, which I don't know. I never think about that part. I also feel like I never fully remember like how old Dorothy is. Um, and I think, I don't know. I think back then people looked older in general, but I'm not entirely sure how old she's supposed to be. Um, and they also like in the opening thing, they like are like Judy Garland, 
and the munchkins as if they're like their own band <laughs> i don't know it's really weird um but um it's like literally like they're their own entities that are like leased for the film or something mm -hmm. um but Something interesting that I found is that Jack Haley, who plays the Tin Man, his son, Jack Haley Jr., went on to marry Liza Minnelli, um, Judy Garland's daughter. Um, so they were only married for like five years, but I thought that was like a cool little crossover. Um, I also love the the Liza Minnelli has survived Twitter account. Mm -hmm. I feel like that's where I get a lot of news. Um, so I don't know what we're going to do if, if she dies. We don't know if she will. Um, but like <laughs> that person's out of a job. Um, I know. And then we watched um the a haunting in Venice. Um so we rewatched that one which is less haunting when you see it the second time. Um but in Agatha Christie um where like you know it's like oh my god have you ever wanted to see Poirot high? <laughs> and now you do. Um uh so that was interesting. Um and then I've been watching because the new season of The Boys came out um, and I was watching that and I like came into it a, li a little bit late. So I was like all the episodes were out except the last one. And in one of the like episode recaps, they were talking about this like plot about like a superhero virus because um, The Boys is like basically like a parody of Marvel um and how cheesy marvel is so maybe you would like it um <laughs> um it's a lot i feel like more approachable than like marvel movies in general um but um there was like this whole plot point about like a superhero virus and i was like i don't remember that at all but i haven't seen the boys in a while because they've been working on this fourth season so then i rewatched the entire thing and that scene was never in it and then i did some research and it was actually like in a spin-off show that i hadn't watched um, so now I'm watching the entire spinoff show, but obviously mm -hmm. the boys has um, uh, Jack Quaid, um, who is the son of Dennis Quaid and Meg Ryan. Um, did you know that Dennis Quaid is also like very into Trump? Mm -mm. Isn't that crazy? I don't know. I thought, I don't know. He's the parent trap dad. What are you doing? Um, uh, Dennis Qu or Jack Quaid did say something about like, I know I'm an Epo baby and that did help me and I'm like working so hard in, in Hollywood to make sure that I'm like deserving of mm -hmm. like the early start that I got which I thought was like actually a really nice thing to say because I feel like usually Nepo babies are like it didn't help me at all but also my first role was in my parents films and <laughs> what a coincidence <laughs> um so I thought that was really nice um and then um so now I'm watching the spinoff series Gen V um which is basically like the college version of the boys so it's like superheroes but they're in like a sky high kind of like university for superheroes so it's like a little bit like kind of like trashier teen like everyone's into sex and drugs and weed and all that kind of stuff um more so than the actual boys which is more kind of like horror and action based um but you know it's still interesting um so I like it um and I still haven't found the virus <laughs> scene yet, um, but I'm working through it. Um, but it has um, Chance Perdomo, who like recently died in a motorcycle accident when he was en route to filming the second season. Um, so that's sad. Oh, um, no. And then one of the actors who plays Jordan Lee. So Jordan Lee is a, basically a character that... Um, Basically, also, the show is doing really interesting things where they're, like, showing kind of typical kind of, like, teen issues or, like, mental health issues through superpowers. Um, so one of the characters um, is kind of forced to have an eating disorder because the way that she gets small is by throwing up and the way that she gets big is by binge eating. Um, and then another character, her power is, like, blood manipulation. So to, like, throw her blood at people, she, like, has to cut her hand and stuff. So it's kind of, like, self-harm kind of things. Um, and, like, how her powers started is, like, she got her period and then, like, killed her family with her period blood. Um, what? Yeah. And then, but then this character, Jordan Lee, um, it deals with, like, um, like, uh non-binary transgender kind of thing so like she 
um, they um, are always kind of changing their gender. So as like girl Jordan, she has certain powers as boy Jordan, he has certain powers and like their dad always wants them to be like the boy version. So it's like a really kind of interesting take on like the dad is like, I know kids don't always like have a choice on which gender um, they are because they just feel like, you know, like inside I'm a woman or like inside I'm a man, but you actually have a choice. So we want you to choose being a boy. Um, so it's kind of an interesting take, but um, the, one of the actors who plays um, the girl version of Jordan, um, London Thor. Her dad is Cameron Thor, who was the original Lewis Dodgson in Jurassic Park, um, who was played by like a different guy in um, the the Lost World series um, when he's like the big ma- antagonist. Um, but he also unfortunately went to prison, um, that which is probably why he wasn't in the Lost World series. Mm for the sexual assault of a 13-year-old girl, which is around the same age that his daughter was at that time, um, which is a little bit uh, worrying. Um, But uh, London Thor's mom is an acting coach who is actually the acting coach of Jazz Sinclair, who is the main character who does like the blood manipulation thing um, in the show, which is really interesting. Um, And then Asa German, who plays Sam Riordan, Um, His dad is Greg German, who has been in kind of like everything. He was Richard Fish and Ally McBeal, Hades and Once Upon a Time. He's also in like um, Grey's Anatomy. Um, And then he doesn't necessarily star in it, but um, uh, Sam's brother in the show is another Nepo baby, Patrick Schwarzenegger, um, who is the son of Maria Shriver. And his dad is someone else I can't remember. It's a joke because it's Arnold Schwarzenegger. <laughs> um, but that's all I've been watching. Nice. Where can they find you and the pod? They can find me at Maria Schwarz on all accounts and at Remake Hot Take on all accounts. Can they find you, Brooke? They can't find me. but They can't catch us- you. They can't get me. But let us know in the comments below if you think you would survive in a quiet place. Um, would you? I would not. I sleep talk. Um, oh, yeah. <laughs> so even in my even in my quietest moments, um, I'd probably like scream and my yeah. Sleep. No, that's actually something I was thinking about. I was like, thank God they don't snore. You know. Yeah, I would have. My to dad tape would my be mouth. so dead so fast. <laughs> yeah, I'd have to tape my mouth. Um invest in a CPAP machine or something, some, some sort of device to, to keep me from just yap, yap, yapping. Um, Mm -hmm. I'd probably like forget to, I feel like I'm like easily startled. So I'd probably like someone would like quietly, like walk up behind me and I'd be like, ah, and then just ruin it for us all. So Mm. I would not survive, but let us know in the comments if you think you would. Mm. All right. bye. Bye.